going on? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lady Nika. Uh, look, first of all, some few announcements, child. First one is, y'all probably hear my dryer. I told y'all we up in this bitch like Mexican, so please excuse any background noise. I use the headphones because they actually have this thing on here where it's supposed to kind of drown out back, background noises. But from time to time, that shit don't work like that, and y'all can hear stuff. So if you hear that dryer, please excuse it. Also, I got my air on because child is hot. I'm in Louisiana, so just bear with me. I think I speak loud enough to where my voice drowns out any of the background noises. Now, with that being said, I want to say to y'all this. Y'all don't bullshit when y'all want to hear something from me. Y'all don't bullshit on letting me know. I uploaded two videos today, my love and hip-hop and the green leaf, the two reviews I had uh, missed out on uh, during my time of absence from down here. And y'all was in them comments like, okay, this good, but uh, <laughs> you gonna do uh, too close to home and have and have nots. And, and honestly, I had the notes and everything already together, and I wasn't planning on getting back on camera, hence the reason why, for those of you who have these high-definition phones and you watch YouTube from your TV, you will see that I am imperfectly perfect today. Flaws and all, honey. But I just wanted to, you know, I want to say, even though I, I am still considered a small YouTuber, um, I appreciate that because... If it weren't for y'all, none of us, from the biggest to the smallest, would continue to make videos if it wasn't for you all who watch our videos, comment on us, comment to us, and tell us, you know, hey, we watch this show, we watch that show, and we, I don't know about others, but I always try to accommodate y'all as much as I possibly can. Now, I can't watch every damn thing, and I ain't never gonna promise you I can, but I feel like when you got a platform where you're celebrated and not tolerated, you owe it to the people who watch you and support you to give them the content that they want. Meaning, if you ask me to do a show, some shows I just ain't gonna do, and I'm gonna be honest with you all about it, but some shows I will do, and I'll go check it out, and if I feel like I can talk about it, you know, because see, this right here be like table conversations. I That's why I, my channel is designed. My channel ain't all about the glitz and the glamour and the state-of-the-art edits or nothing like that. They coming, though, bitch. They coming, because I'm going to have to go into that if I'm going to ever produce any videos where I may, you know, cook a meal or something or quick something for y'all to see. I would have to get into that editing thing real heavily. However, right now, I'm... <laughs> The way my channel is based up, which is probably why I was deemed the YouTube auntie and I didn't give that self, myself that name, you all gave it to me, it's because conversations with me, be it about uh, reviews, current events, or whatever, it comes across as, I'm not trying to talk to you like I'm on your camera. I want you to be able to envision me and you sitting down maybe at my kitchen table having a nice glass of lemonade or some Hennessy, whichever one is your flavor. And we just having a general conversation. That is what my, that's what my channel is about. It's more about making you feel like you talking to the girl next door or you talking to your auntie or your mother or your sister or your good, good, good girlfriend or something like that. So I appreciate appreciate that and like I said I wasn't planning on jumping back down here but I got such good responses and then y'all know y'all clown over 9,000 views on a damn video about the have and have nots y'all know y'all made me feel like I was super special and I want to say thank you to each and every one of y'all in the words of uh, Sky Santana I love you in HD bitch okay y'all go check him out if y'all haven't uh, Sky Santana real good YouTuber do excellent story times funny as fuck but anyway, I don't wasted four minutes, but the review ain't that long for too, uh, too Close to Home. This was episode three of the first season entitled Highway 16. And baby, we started off with Brody in that shower giving me his sexy when all of a sudden he hears his car being driven off. He jump out the shower, you know, damn near um, put a towel around him, running out there to see what's going on, excuse me, because y'all know his daddy suffers from Alzheimer's, so he goes in and out of his phases where he's not quite in his right state of mind, and child, when he made it to that um, 
porch, he seen daddy hightailing it on up the road. So, even though they didn't let that towel drop like I wish it had, he went on back up in there and put his little white boy six jeans on and jumped on the motorcycle and attempts to catch up you know, with dad. Now, we see old Bunny. Hey, Bunny girl, come through, come through with her regular nigga rigged ass car. You know, the kind that when you got to, when you get out the car, you got to lift the door up and then close the child. I'm not going to act like I don't know nothing about that because I do, child. I've been there, done that before. So, anyway, Bunny girl, rock your <laughs> girl. Get where you got to go the best way you know how to get there, okay? By who crew, honey. <laughs> I had my days with a jank ass car. Anyway, she arrived at work and um as she going up the, the steps to the diner, she noticed that the door is open. So she go call the police and stuff. And child, I told y'all this is a small town. This is a small town, like many small towns here in the south, where pretty much everybody know everybody's name. Baby, when she called down there the police department, they told my body it is you. <laughs> and she said yes and she explained what the situation was so they agreed to have a, a deputy come out there and check the situation out so while she waiting on 5 she peeped through the window of the diner to see if she could possibly see who up in there and guess who up in there Brody Daddy also known to us now is Dr. Allen I said child he's sitting in that diner but y'all he butt through the neck <laughs> She called back down there to the station and told them to cancel the deputy that was going to come over because it's just Dr. Allen in there. And she said she's going to hang up with them and call Brody. But the uh, police officer that answered the phone told her that, oh, he been looking for his dad. We'll just go ahead on and give him a call and let him know he down at the diner. So she's like, okay. And she go in there and she approached Dr. Allen. She asked him, is you okay? He say, um, he called. He asked her, why is it so cold? Now, she was kind of embarrassed, but she said, well, Dr. Allen, you kind of naked. And he looked down, and he realized, because, you know, like I told you, he goes in and out. He realizes that, hell, I am naked. And it was kind of embarrassing to him, too. Child, that dementia stuff is hard to see on a person. It really is. Because, child, it's horrible for the person that goes through it, but it's even harder for the person that has to watch it because it's like pulling on your heartstrings to see someone who used to be so lucid and fluid in the world now deteriorate down to barely even remembering who you are, much less themselves, okay? Child, they told me about 10 years ago that was part of my symptoms with the lupus diagnosis. Uh, as I, you know, I've been had lupus for longer than 10 years, but around about 10 years ago, as I was like maybe five or six years into the disease, one of my doctors did in fact tell me that dementia was probably going to be one of my uh, issues that I would face in life. He actually told me that. Uh, because my flare-up was so bad and they was having such a hard time at that time trying to get my, you know, get the lupus back under control that it was more than likely. I had, he told me I had like an 80% chance that dementia was going to be, a, you know, was going to set in on me probably within a year or two. And that was 10 years ago. And here I see it today. And all I'm going to say about that is, but God. Okay, you told me that that was going to be my faith, but God, and I'm going to leave that right there. Anyway, back to the review. He asked why he had no clothes on. She couldn't really answer that because she don't know. But um, then we see he done went over there to the coffee section and done just told that up, talking about he was trying to make him some coffee. Bonnie said she had fixed it for him, but before she did, she went back to the back and she got one of their cook outfits for him to put on because he, like I told you, butt booty naked. Child, he started thinking that they wanted him to, come on, you want me to cook for you? Bonnie was like, no, nah, I know that's right, girl, because you want to keep your little piece of job. You already struggling. You sure don't want him in there uh, cooking nothing and happen to burn stuff. He, he could have burnt off his little piece of shrivel up ping over there trying to make that coffee and everything. Anyway. I, Bonnie said, hell no, and I did too. Okay. Well, Bonnie explained that uh, he gets to asking about his wife. And Bonnie explained that uh, she died. And he got upset and started crying. And then he changed it. He said, did you clean the walls back there in the bathroom? He said, because your sister used to take me in back there all the time. And I guess, tell my Shelby, that really hurt her because she do want to see her sister do better. That, uh, that 
kind of got to her and she actually started crying and um that let us know Shelby been messed up a minute honey he said I know everything for, about you he said I know everything about your mom your grandma Mac and, and it, a bunch of other people child he said he had all the tea he told her that she needs to um he asked her, he said, you need to follow trees. And then he started asking her, did she like daisies and stuff like that? And I was totally off on that. So if y'all kind of understood what that was all about, put that down in the description. I mean, in the comment section. Put it in the panic, baby, because I'm confused. Uh, then Dr. Allen going to tell her, say, uh, man, your sister's in some trouble. Bonnie said, what you talking about? He said, you know, uh, you ain't been watching the news? He said, it's all over the news. She in some kind of mess with the president. Um, he said, you know the sister I'm talking about, the uppity one. <laughs> he said, you heard on news, sister, and some shit. So you might be check on your sister, okay? Child, next we see JB getting out of the uh, car with some chick. And I assume Bonnie must know who he is, who she is, because she probably one of the side chicks or something that he won to from time to time when he mad with her. And uh, he telling her he need to find his load, Shelby stole it. She said, you already emptied your load, and we we still on that. She said, I'm not giving you the keys to my car. And he began to get somewhat aggressive with her. Like, once again, he's trying to take her fucking keys from her. Well, she wrestling with him with them keys, and then Dr. Allen tried to stop him, too. And he, he kind of roughed him up a little bit. And child, next thing we know, in comes Brody, and Brody started whooping his ass. I, I ain't realized Brody was that fine. Now, I told you I don't do pink meat, but Brody could get it. Okay, he really can. But uh, they get the fight, and Jay, uh, Brody was whooping that ass, and Sheriff Mosley come up in there and tell them to stop, or they both gonna be sitting their ass down in the jail. He said, y'all need to stop all of this. Y'all been at it since y'all was little boys. And uh, it's in that moment that we learned that JB and Brody are the same uh, brothers. Now, remember, in previous episodes, I don't know if it was one or two, one time the daddy was um, fading in and out of his right state of mind, and he asked Brody, did he get his brother from the field? Okay? Then you remember another time, I think the time when he was about to shoot him and shit, he actually called him Jesse, and he was he had to tell him, Daddy, I'm Brody. Okay? So, they brothers, and apparently they have had this type of rivalry between the two of them since they were little kids. We find out they share the same mama, but mama stepped out on Dr. Allen once upon a time, and Brody is the, re uh, is the result of that mess, honey. Mm, mm, mm. Brody and JB always had this feud going on between them is what we learned. And uh, Brody basically was, I mean, uh, JB was talking about you only sticking around because you waiting on him to die, but you need to let him go so we can I can get my half. And I'm like, well, hold up. How you know you in the wheel? Because technically you not his child. So you, oh, you, 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 you putting your horse before the wagon. No, I think what it is, it say you putting your wagon before your horse, some shit like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about, old country ass saying. But anyway, that's what he's doing. He assuming he in that wheel and there ain't no guarantee that he is, okay? Well, he decided he gonna go and take his dad on home. And finally asked him, how you gonna get him there? Brody gonna say on the motorcycle. And I'm like, really, Brody? You gonna put your dad on the back of this motorcycle behind you and drive him to the house? Bonnie say, you too prideful. You just won't ask for help. She said, why don't you just take my car, drive him home, and when I get off work, I'll take the motorcycle and bring it back to you. He had to go ahead on and agree with that because how you going to put your dad on the back of this motorcycle is what I'm trying to find out, okay? Okay, child. Before he left, he realized that he do need help with his daddy. He told Bonnie, he said, you real good with my daddy. She said, yeah, I offered to help, but I'm not offering again. This You're going to have to ask if you want my help. And he wind up having to ask her for help. She said, yeah, but she said, look here, that means if I sit with him, I'm sitting with him not for pay, but for my mom to have her uh, trailer rent free. And he agreed to it, okay? Now, let's go on up to uh, D.C. Anna waking up at that dude, John House, the reporter. And uh, that she spent the night at, and he trying to offer her everything under the sun. What he doing is stalling her so that the, he, it could be lights, camera, action. He got people coming over there to so-called interview her. And she asking, why you being so nice to me? And he going to say he a nice guy. Child, please. I, 
she seen to fail for it though, okay? Mm -hmm. Child, I wouldn't have failed for that. Yeah, that was crazy. He then went on to throw out this scenario about his ex-girlfriend had one time got involved with this powerful man and it didn't go as well as planned. Now, I'm thinking at that point, Anna, you might be from Happy, Alabama. You may have been the chick that was sleeping with the most powerful man in the United States and didn't get nothing out of that deal. But please don't tell me that you, you're not catching on to what this dude is saying. Mm. She didn't seem like she was. She get up to go to the restroom to freshen up and do what she got to do. And when she come back, a colleague of his from the um, newspaper is there talking about, we hear that you, you know, we want to hear your side of the story because the president suffered a heart attack. And we heard that uh, he had it while having sex with you. He trying to tell her that they can help her out, but she not stupid. At least she proved to us in that moment she wasn't stupid. She leaves, and as she leaving, child, she get bombarded by more press. I mean, they was all over her ass, but she did manage to get away. And where did she go? To them fake-ass friends' house. She goes to see Dix. And Valerie happened to be there. Now, Dex is not wanting to really deal with her. At first, you know, last episode, it seemed like he kind of cared something about her. But he ain't care nothing about her, really. It's like it's more about their personal um, their personal lives and their, their career expectations that they don't want to have messed up by being affiliated with her. And in a way, I can understand that. But at the same time, this will be your girl. If this is your friend and you see she in need, why you leaving her hanging like that? Victor wasn't for it. Victor is Dex's man. He buzzed on up. And Dex and Valerie not here for it. They say she already done put them in a compromising enough situation. And like I said, I understand that. But let me tell you about friends. Uh, people that, you know, people use that word a little bit too, too much if you ask me. Uh, friends stick around through thick and thin. They stick around through good and bad. Highs and lows. A friend, a real friend. It's like roots on the tree, as Tyler Perry once said. He said you can have a thousand branches on that tree, but only a few little roots, and that's all that tree needs at the bottom to be able to sustain itself, and that's how your friend's supposed to be in your life. These people were seasonal acquaintances, meaning as long as there was no controversy, their careers and their personal lives were not put in any kind of jeopardy, they cool with her. And I also think that a lot of them was cool, both of them was cool with her because they assumed that she was from a wealthy family. So that's why they was cool with her, but now... They done found out that she was the one that was laying up that president and everything else, and they want to turn their back on her. So, mm, mm, mm. Seasonal acquaintances is what they were, if you ask me. The minute this girl got into a situation, I'm about to go in a rabbit hole. The minute this girl got in a situation, now just at the beginning of the damn season, we had Valerie telling her she need to hook up with people and trying to be act like she's so concerned about her and stuff. But the minute this situation came out about she being the one to lay up that president, you see how fast this girl tune changed and she ain't want to have nothing else to do with this girl. You see how fast people will turn on you. They'll forget every damn thing that y'all have between y'all leading up to and including the situation that makes them change on you. Now, they don't forgot about that was their friend. They don't forgot about they done probably had deep, long conversations. They don't forgot about who the person really is at the heart. They don't forgot about all the things that y'all probably done shared between the two of y'all and what you have added to each other's lives. They don't forgot all this shit in just that moment when it came out that this girl had been doing some shit behind the scenes that technically really wouldn't fuck with their careers. Now, they may get asked a few questions, but what can they really tell or what can they really do when it's not Valerie Pulse wasn't on the president's pain. Uh, the president is not gay, for as we know, so Dex and Victor Scholl ain't had nothing to do with it, but yet and still, y'all treat her like she's the scum of the earth because she done made this mistake, okay? Hmm. They pretend friends, like I said. And I don't even know why you went there. I don't know why she went there. They, uh, 
we see that Val and Dick's phone ring at the same time. And apparently somebody from the White House saying that they need to get Anna out of that apartment because they've been watching. So they really go in on that you gotta go stuff. Anna said, can y'all please help me get home? Now Val, I guess the tea done broke about this girl uh, background and that she's not from these wealthy people, but she's from a, a small town in Alabama, a trailer park area, if you will, rural folks, you know. And she talking about uh, where exactly is that because uh, you told her, no, she said, you lie so much, we we don't know, you know, what to believe, because clearly you're not from this wealthy family, as you proclaim. Victor wanted to help her out. He thought of getting her a plane, then thought about a bus, and then he thought about a, uh, you know, those ideas were not viable for her, for obvious reasons. So, he said, look, it's just a 12-hour drive. I can take you down there. Dick said, no, you're not doing that. And Victor looked at him like, you know, wait a minute, hold up. I'm grown. I do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of you trying to control me. Uh, Dex went on to throw up in Victor's face that, uh, but I pay all the bills here. And Victor got mad. He said, oh, so that's how we doing it. That's how we doing it. You gonna, you, you, you trying to front in front of company. Now, you said you'd never say that, but it's cool. I'm still taking her down there, like I said, because she's a friend, and we have to do something to try to help her. Dex went to trying to explain him and Val that it ain't like it is up there. Down in the South, you know, you being feminine or whatnot, it's not going to be accepted. You're a minority down there. They, they ain't ready for you, baby. They ain't ready for you. But he is probably the only real friend she got because he is not worried about that. By hook or crook, he going to get his friend back down to Alabama to her people so she can be safe and try to work through what, what she done calls for herself. And I was here for that. He went back and down no matter what they said, even though it's true down here in the South where they sleeping with each other's relatives all the damn time and family secrets is the name of the game. We still got people down here who have not woken up and realized that this is 2016 and homosexuality is is real and people are allowed to do you know live their lives they can marry they're allowed to get married they're allowed to do everything they every uh, heterosexual people uh can do but down here in the south people still frown their damn nose up at it like it's taboo and i don't understand it but he ain't give a damn he said he was gonna take her down there and i said see now that's what i'm talking about that's a real friend now, next thing we see Shelby at this gas station, and she done met up with these two dudes down there because she fainted, okay? She likes she already have, but she wants something else to boost her up. She telling them that give her $10,000 so they can have a rig, the electronics, and the TVs, all of that stuff in there. Now, one of the dudes go back there looking at the stuff, and they really, the other two dudes was like, uh-uh, we are not finna do all of that. But the other dude come back and say, um, I give you $5,000 plus some blow. The other guy's like, you gonna actually give her that? He said, yeah. He said, oh yeah, we gonna get it to her. <laughs> Trust me, it's worth it. Child, she happy as hell. Now, they are too, uh, they are too because in the back of that rig, dude found a bag full of dope. So while Shelby been running around trying to figure out how she was going to get some dope in her system, the fool would didn't even take the time to look back there and see what was in that bag. She was riding with the dope the whole time and ain't know a child. I said, whatever. Mm, mm, mm. We see J JB finally pull up to that gas station with the police and he checking in the rig and the popo asking him is everything okay he saying yeah now i don't know why the fuck he was saying yeah. well i know why because it was drugs in the truck um soon as the damn officer roll out jb is losing it because that dope missing we see him go over to Conley Truck and Hunt, and these two, uh, these people standing up there waiting on him, looking like, I think they name is the Malone family, and they looking at him like, where you been? He said he late because, you know, his sister-in-law had stole the truck, right? Now, they go back there to check the truck to see where the, the dope is, right? And it's gone. JB began to explain to them that his sister-in-law Shelby stole the truck and he said he was going to get it back, you know, what she had done stole out the fucking truck, she, you know, he going to get it back from them. Now, it was this older one that was standing up with this group of men that uh, asked him, he said, what's your, your sister-in-law, what her name? 
And what's your sister? What 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 your woman name is? The, the girl's sister. He told. He said where they live. He said Highway 16. JB answered all of that and was guaranteeing that he was gonna get that money back. And that older one took that gun out and shot one of the dudes that was with him that was searching the truck right in the head. When he shot him in the head, blood splattered all over JB fucking face. He told him, you got 24 hours to get all of my stuff back or every white woman along Highway 16 will be dead. And he got in his car and drove off. JB now is freaking the hell out because he's scared as hell. He don't know what's going to happen and how he going to get this dope back because he know Shelby ass. He run into that restroom. Baby, he must didn't know that blood was on his fucking face. When he seen that, he went to throwing up and trying to get the blood off of him. Now he is in all kinds of scared mode because he got 24 hours to get these people back. They, they dope. And it's going to be hard to do because Shelby actually don't have it. She done sold it to somebody else. Child... Next thing we know, we see Shelby laying up in the bed with Ray. Now, Ray done let her come back. Now, remember, he put her out before at the trailer park and told her, get it how you live. But he back with her now. And they sitting up there counting money and getting high as giraffe ass. And that's when the damn episode let off. I said, y'all is doing too damn much on this day at this time. Child, I was too through with them. But that's where it let off Ed. And child, we're going to see what they going to get. They said, how, how he going to get this dope back. Because it's going to be interesting to see. I'm quite sure somebody finna get hurt anyway that's it y'all i gotta come back in and do have and have nots because i promise i'm finna do it in the meantime in between time please like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys back for have and have nots peace